Hey guys, my name's Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I want to show you a device I got called a waveform generator, signal generator, arbitrary waveform generator. The term gets thrown around interchangeably. It's a UTG962. That, that gadget over there. <laughs> Stick around. Let's talk about it. Okay. Guys, this is the UTG962. It is what is called a uh, arbitrary waveform generator or a function generator. Those terms are kind of used interchangeably. And what this will do is create waveforms. Uh, you can use this to output various kinds of signals to an oscilloscope or for any other kind of testing you need to do where you want a specific sort of waveform, a specific frequency, so on and so forth. Uh, this particular um, AWG or function generator uh, I got off of Amazon and I'll uh, roll in a link here to show you the page and I'll put the link in the uh, description below. So what this will do is let me create a whole bunch of different waveforms. It has two channels that are each 50 ohm impedance and it has a input for a sync signal if you're doing uh, some other kinds of testing with it, uh, FSK or frequency counting, uh, or using it as a sync device for uh, external clock. So this device was about $170 on Amazon, I believe. And I, I also want to say I apologize for the dark. My lights are directly overhead, and if I have them on, you can't see anything except the lights in the screen. So this is about the best way to show this to you. So. Um, on this device, and the back side of it, let me show you the back side is, is pretty much, you know, the FCC sticker and a serial number. We have a power switch, 5 volt input, and USB. And there is software that we can use with this as well. Um, and the link is provided uh, on Amazon for that. The, uh, the waveforms that we can select from, and, and right now you see I have it on pulse. Um, when you're in a waveform, the knob lets me adjust the various parameters of the waveform. So if I go back to wave again, then these buttons on the bottom let me select the kind of output wave. And it shows you a, a, a sample of what the wave looks like on the screen next to it. All right, so, oops, square wave, right, every time I hit one, it takes me to the parameters for it. Uh, a ramp wave, arbitrary wave, and then we can go over here to noise and straight DC. And you notice there was a one called arbitrary. This device lets you create your own waveforms in software uh, or on the device if you're so inclined. And then it will hold 24 user generated waveforms. So if you have a specific kind of waveform pattern you're trying to use to test whatever gear you're using this with, you can store it on here. The software is actually fairly decent. Um, it lets you create waveforms. Uh, rise, fall, everything. You can manually edit all the parameters in a, in a full screen windowed interface. So that's pretty neat. Um, the utility button takes us to the settings for channel 1 and channel 2. Uh, whether we want to invert or what our load is, do we have an amp limit on this? So this runs off of 5 volts DC. We can set our amperage limit so that we don't potentially smoke any very sensitive circuits with um, too much current. Uh, you know, if you put this on to something that's not expecting but, but a couple hundred milliamps and you blast it with a half an amp, that could probably be a problem. <clears throat> and so our upper and lower voltage thresholds and so on and so forth. That's all in utility. Uh, here's our system settings, whether we're going to use sync output or not, what kind of sync, what language we have it on, do we want to have beeps, and the numerical format, which is interesting because I haven't changed that. And your options are space and none, so they don't use periods, which is kind of interesting when you're wanting to look at something. Um, like 1.3 it's going to be a comma 1 comma 300 on this device which is a little irritating so those are the things we can do in here 
we can back out of that uh, beep on language and again those are basically the same things that we have uh, on this menu up here they just also have soft buttons across the bottom for it backlight on and off or how high we want the light so we can turn this down I don't I don't know why you would I like it bright it has a screen saver which will go off at a certain time um, I have it disabled um, presets these are going to be uh, restoring the system settings to the default state. Possibly, and I don't know this, you could load your own settings and save them, but I don't have any in here. Um, a little bit of a help screen. Uh, it's kind of menu specific, so if you long press the help button, if you long press a button, you get the help for that, for that specific button. So I could long press the backlight selects the brightness of the display screen because we couldn't have figured that out on our own, right? And then you just hit it again and it goes away. Um, so, those are the basic basic system settings. If we go back to utility, um, this is the frequency counter function. It will figure out the frequency, the periodicity of it, and the duty cycle. And then, of course, we have all the same settings we can do for channel 2. All right, uh, so we looked at wave. Now, waveforms, let's go back to wave and let's pull up sine wave. And there's our basic settings for sine wave. A period of 10 milliseconds with 10 millivolts peak to peak and an offset of 10 millivolts and it's zero degrees phase. So let's say we wanna change the phase. And as you see, we can do that that way. We can also just come over here and type the number and hit the knob, push the knob and now we have a 180 degree phase on our sine wave right same other settings offset amperage uh, peak to peak all that is has stayed the same we've just changed the phase and you can do that with with most any of these settings you can just cursor to it with the knob and either rotate the knob on a very slow scale these right and left arrows over here on the far right let you change the uh, position uh, so you can go from you know the tenths or hundredths position to the whole digit position um, i find it a whole lot easier just to type the number and, and hit the button push this knob in which functions as a as a enter button as well uh, so anyway so we're in sine wave now and if we click mode then you see we have different kinds of modes we can use. There's an AM sine wave. And of course then it gives us the relevant parameters that we're going to set for our AM sine wave. What frequency and, and what the depth is. If we go back, we can set it to PM, which is phase modulation. And again, we can set parameters for it. FM, frequency modulation. We can set our frequency deviation and our modulation frequency, which is the center frequency, right? Just like FM radio. And of course we have frequency shift key with the carrier frequency and our hop frequency. And we have line modulation and we have logarithmic modulation. So when you select a different mode, depending on the wave, when you select a specific wave, rather, then it will let you change the mode for that kind of wave. So I have it set to sine wave. We'll just go with straight, uh, probably I would use, so, yeah. There's noise modulation. So pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. So you can create fairly, pretty much any wave that you could possibly imagine with this. And, and again, all the parameters are 100% adjustable for, for each type of waveform, which is pretty cool. So you have two channels, as I mentioned, here and here. And these buttons here, over here on the side, are for channel 1 and channel 2. So 
I'm seeing what the generated waveform is generally going to look like over on the channel 2 side because we're only we don't have any channels turned on. I can turn on channel 1 and then here it shows it's jumped to uh, absolute sign because I have it on arbitrary so that's what it picked. And then if I hit channel 1 again it's turned green and now it's putting out that waveform with those parameters. Okay, so here we have the function generator hooked up to the oscilloscope. And what I'm doing here is putting out a pulse waveform. And the bandwidth is determined by the period on there, and then our voltage thresholds from a low of zero volts to a high of five volts. We're in phase, we're not going to get it out of phase. We have a 56% duty cycle with a 15 nanosecond rise and fall on our edge time. So that's the setup I'm using here. The reason I'm showing this, let me put this back out of the way and look at the scope. The reason I'm showing this is, you remember several weeks ago we did stupid scope tricks and I showed you how I could measure length of cable using a 9 volt battery and a resistor. Um, the other way we can do that, or something like that, is to use a signal generator, a waveform generator. So what I'm doing is using the UTG962 here to put out that pulse waveform. And I have that up on the screen, and this is a very short piece of coax I have over here laying to the side of the oscilloscope. And we could do the same procedure where we hit the cursors and then measure, oops, wrong wrong knob, <laughs> my bad, where we hit the cursors and move that to measure the same points on the waveform and what this pulse is doing is of course it's going out here to the BNC connector and then down the cable and where it bounces back because there's no termination on that cable. It's just about a 20 foot piece of cable hanging in space and you can see we have a delta there of 70.8 nanoseconds on the scope so that tells us um, how fast the round trip took and um, that is a round trip so we divide that in half so 35 nanoseconds to go from from here our initial um, connection to the end of the cable and then we could take that and based on the calculations like I showed you guys in that previous video when I did it with the battery and the resistor setup then we could calculate the length of the cable based on the velocity factor of the cable uh, which would be a percentage of C, the speed of light probably somewhere between 66 and 85 percent and I'm not going to do that I just wanted to show you this is one use for the signal generator alright? great that turns it off so this is really cool and this is how I captured the image on the oscilloscope as I had it set with pulse uh, a pulse waveform because I just wanted a quick shot and then uh, ran at the length of the cable similar to what we were doing with the 9 volt battery so this is an excellent test tool uh, and as I said $170 and this thing does everything any amateur radio guy could ever want and probably honestly way more than I could ever want um, it's outstanding and if you have an oscilloscope and you're trying to learn how to use the oscilloscope this little guy will help you with the scope because let me tell you it takes a little bit of doing to get things set on a scope the first time you ever try to use one so this is uh, this is also a great teaching tool for learning how to use your oscilloscope and it doesn't matter whether you have uh, a lower end you know 30 or 50 megahertz bandwidth USB scope or you have a higher end, you know, $25,000 scope. Although if you have a $25,000 scope, you apparently know what you're doing way more than I do. But even a even a, a budget model, $600 to $1,000 scope, this little tool will help you get the most out of your scope because it'll let you practice with low voltage, low amperage, dialing in your scope to look for signals so you know how to set it, the vertical and horizontal resolution on the scope. Really nice piece of kit. All right, now, I know some people like to take things apart, so let's do that. And who am I to argue? We're going to power it off. 
and it has little tiny Phillips head screws. So let me go get some tools and I'll be right back. Okay, I'll be honest with you, my will to tear this open much further is not very high. This is about as close of a look as we're going to get. You can see this has two boards in it connected by this ribbon cable here. Uh, so this is a display on the back side of this particular board. That's what that ribbon cable is going to, is feeding the display. This is the beep buzzer mechanism. And our processor is not on this board. I don't see anything that looks like a processor. So it may be underneath this shield. And I'll be right back and we'll remove the shield and take a quick look there. So this is the uh, the insides under the shield. I don't want to fool with this ribbon cable. I want to be real careful with this. Uh, I don't feel like uh, taking that thing out and then trying to get it put back together. So if you look inside this, let me find a light. I'll shine a little more light on this now. Well, it's not very much helpful. It's probably about as good as we're going to get. That is most likely the processor right here. These are small relays uh, for adjustments that it's making when it's creating its outputs. And then I see various, I believe those are transistors uh, on there. And so that's, uh, that's the board. So it's really just two boards and a display. Um, I saw a review by the Smokin' Ape. He did one on a different model of these, and I would not be surprised if these are almost identical boards. Um, there's probably several models of signal generator that use this same form factor. I don't know that they're the same board, and they may not be. I believe this screen is a little bigger than the one on the uh, the one that the Smokin' Ape reviewed, and you should watch his video uh, on signal generators. I'll put a link to that one down below. <clears throat> so that's the insides. Um, I am not nearly qualified enough to tell you what everything is and what it does. Obviously, those are the connectors, our channel one and our channel two, and our sync um, and counter connector, and that's uh, that's it. There we go. Okay, so this is from earlier when we did the test, um, what's on the scope, that display. And that's the same waveform that the uh, signal generator is putting out right now. So what I want to do is, and I, I don't have a really good view where you can see both at the same time. But I'm going to go and I'm going to change the, uh, the waveforms on the signal generator. And if you look right there at the bottom of the screen you can see the current wave that's being output by the signal generator. So what I'm going to do is change it to sine wave and then we're going to have to go to auto set because I changed the parameters and there's our sine wave. Uh, basically still the same period 140 microseconds with a 5 volt high and 0 peak and 0 degrees for our phase. So there's our sine wave and I'm going to turn off cursors and I'm going to turn off measurement. Oops, off. So we get that off the screen. And let me zoom in on the scope screen a little bit more. And you can see in that upper right hand corner of the scope right here is our current frequency and what our sample rate is and how many data points, what our trigger is set to. We're using uh, DC. We're not, not looking at AC at all. All right. So, uh, if I change, as I mentioned, if I change on the um, signal generator, if I change the period, which is currently set at 140 uh, microseconds, I'm going to adjust that period now in real time. I watch the waveform on the scope and watch the frequency up here in the upper right hand corner. So there's 240 microseconds, and notice our frequency changed. Back to 140 microseconds, 7 kilohertz. 
240 microseconds. Now we're down to 4.6 kilohertz. I'm changing the most significant digit here on the counter. Now we're down to 2.9. That's a 340 millisecond time on our output waveform. So that directly affects the frequency we're looking at on the scope. All right, on a lower end scope, scopes are rated by bandwidth. And I don't really want this to be a scope video, but scopes generally come in, I believe some of the lower end, lower end scopes might be 20 or 30 uh, megahertz bandwidth. And then you get into 50, 100, 200, and there's probably some higher, but that is way out of my price range. Um, so this is a 200 megahertz scope. So as we as we crank up that time period, we're cutting our our frequency down, right? And conversely, if I go the other way now, 240 mega uh, 240 microsecond waveform, 140 microsecond waveform. That's a 40 second microsecond waveform, and now we've jumped up to what is that? 25 kilohertz. And we're going to crank that down a little farther 33 50 kilohertz 100 kilohertz and that's a 10 microsecond waveform and now i can change a, a the tenths digit and as i change the tenths digit you see that we start dropping that frequency down because we're making the waveform longer straight up so let's crank this back up to where we got a waveform we can see and there's a 144 microsecond waveform which gives us a frequency of 6.9 kilohertz all right so anyway that's um, a sine wave let's change our wave type to a square wave and as you can see that is a straight up square wave and again the same things apply if I change the voltage, that's going to change the amplitude of the signal that you're looking at on the screen. If I change the phase, that's going to change the way the waveform is actually displayed. And if I change the uh, time period, that's going to change our frequencies. Just keep looking in that upper right corner of the scope. All right. So let me go change our phase. And let's crank this to 180. Let me just type that. So there's a 180 degree square wave. And you can see that we have half the wave above the ISO line and half below the ISO line because it's 180 degrees out of phase. All right, waveforms. That's our pulse wave from earlier. Uh, the scope's not really set up to catch the pulse wave at this point because we've changed so much stuff. There's a ramp form, which is real similar to a, a sawtooth wave. All right. And then we can change the symmetry on the waveform as well. And make it more of a sawtooth. That's a symmetry adjustment on the signal generator. And we can change the phase of that. It's similar to phase. And it has a phase adjustment as well. And this is a 180 degree phase. Let's go to zero on the phase. And now you can see it's all above the ISO line. We'll modify our symmetry. And there's 50% symmetry, which is a straight up sawtooth waveform. Go back to wave one more time. Here's our arbitrary waveform generator function. And this is picked an absolute sign. We can go to noise, and let me hit auto. I don't know if we can capture that where it looks good because it, it's noise. And then our last waveform is straight DC. And about the only function I can change on that is the voltage. So it's currently at two and a half volts, and as I turn down the voltage, it drops the signal down. And I don't have the display on with the uh, with the voltages. So those are just some of the functions. And of course I can do this with two at one time. So I could put, if I hook up the other connectors, I could put a square wave, sawtooth wave, sine wave, a pulse, 
all up there at one time and you do something like that if you're trying to test a piece of gear and it requires a certain input frequency to function right to saturate uh, a transistor stage so that it switches it might need a, a waveform of a certain voltage and a certain current before it hits that saturation peak so with this I can go straight to that and this would come in if you're building a circuit all right the other thing that you can do with this is if you're working on a bandpass filter, you can use the signal generator to test your bandpass filter output, right? A signal analyzer would be more useful for that, but you could do it with um, an oscilloscope and the fast Fourier transform function, as well as a waveform generator to test your, to test your bandpass filter. And that might be something we do in an upcoming video. But anyway, that's, um, that's a quick rundown of the UTG962 function slash arbitrary waveform generator. All right, 60 megahertz bandwidth on this device, 200 mega samples per second. Um, the scope far surpasses that. Scope is 200 megahertz bandwidth with two giga samples per second on the scope. But it's a, it's a nice compact little device. I had a case for it. It comes with a USB power brick. Um, USB cable, a data cable. Um, I may come back in, uh, this video is running a little longer than I wanted, and we'll probably come back in the future and take a look at the software that goes with this. This will interface with the scope directly or over the network with the software, so I can actually um, send signals to my scope over my LAN, my local area network, with the waveform generator software and the waveform generator plugged into my PC. I believe, I'm not 100% sure of this, and, and we'll test it and I'll make a video about it. I believe I don't even need the waveform generator to talk to the scope with the software that comes with this. But that's, uh, that's another show. All right, guys, well, that's all I've got for today. Um, as always, please hit me that thumbs up and uh, tell YouTube you like the video if you do. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you've got any comments, I'd love to hear them. I'm learning all this gear, you know, and, um, and I'm having fun doing it. And that's what this hobby is all about. <clears throat> so hit subscribe, give me a thumbs up, share this with your friends, and uh, ring the, make sure and ring that bell so that you get notified whenever I post any new content. All right, y'all. Thanks, 73s.